Hello guys and welcome to my first ever Q&A. Now as you may have seen recently, the Car Obsession YouTube channel hit 1,000 subscribers and it's still growing, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, thank you ever so much for helping me achieve that. It's, you know, I don't really know what to say. I'm just so grateful that you've seen my videos and decided, yeah, you know what, I want some more of that and you've stuck around. So thank you very much. Now I'm joined by my good lady Patsy and you're probably wondering, why she's got a bit random bit of her hair missing now sadly this is bad news but you, you have to make the most out of a bad situation now unfortunately her father my father-in-law has been diagnosed with cancer um but big shock because it came on very quickly with no warnings but let's not dwell on that too much so patsy is raising money for mcmillan cancer support so you've braved the shave and now, you've, now you look like a kind of punk, like a, like a rocky biker chick. You know what, I actually think it quite suits you in all honesty. So if you want to donate some money, uh, we would both be very, very grateful. So I will put the link to the uh, Just Giving page in the video description below. So if you've got a spare, five or whatever it may be, please donate. So, okay, let's kick things off, shall we? Supercar.spotter.uk. Yep, yeah, okay. Kick it off with a, a good one. Go on. If you could get your hands on any car to do a review on, what would it be? That is a very good question. Um, it's quite a difficult one, but it sort of is a difficult one because there's lots of choices. But out of all the cars I've seen this year, the one I've wanted to drive the most is the brand new McLaren 720S. I like the way how it looks, I like the way how McLaren has kind of gone for a design which was likely to us to upset quite you know quite a lot of people yeah. but I like the way how the brand has gone you know what we're gonna think outside the box and do something bold and dynamic so for me that would be the car I'd want to test right now. I certainly wouldn't mind being a passenger when you tested that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you wouldn't. I wouldn't. Alright next question now, trust the person who uh, runs this Instagram page to ask this question, okay. and you'll know why. This is from cars underscore of underscore Surrey. Now. Yep. Can you name and shame the worst car you've reviewed so far? Yeah, so that's not actually that difficult a question. Uh, so thankfully, most of the cars that I've reviewed have been quite good, and even the less you know even ones that haven't been as good have still been average but for me it, hands down it has to go to the suzuki jimny and i actually got a lot of flack on that review and a lot of people hated on me for it and it turns out that for suzuki jimny it's got it's got a big fan club and it seems like its members don't want anything bad said about the car but yes it's fantastic off-road in regards to its off-road ability you can't really beat it. I think you know, the cars, you know, I think the only car that can really sort of, you know, hold a candle to it would be the Land Rover Defender. So we took it off road as well, didn't we? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, the Jimny is fantastic off road. Even though I had it on uh, road tyres, so I didn't have it on knobbly tyres or anything, it was very good off road. But rest of the driving, poor. It, it's average. At, at, well, it's not even average. It's, it's mediocre. It is the ride isn't very good, doesn't handle very well, the engine isn't gutsy, the interior looks like it came from the 90s. Um, yeah. If you're driving, if you're not driving that car off-road, then I would urge you not to buy it. But if you do need a kind of cheap, dependable off-road car that won't break the bank and is you know quite easy to drive, then the Jimny's up your street. But if you're actually going to use it in the real world on roads such as this. No, 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 no. Moving swiftly on. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's swift, there, yeah, Suzuki, okay. yeah. Ah, yeah. You see that? that yeah, I, yeah, I was meant to do that, yeah. yeah. Nice, oh, nice link. Yeah. Mm. Live to drive underscore. No, what does he want? Oh, should we skip him? Should we move on? Yeah. Swiftly moving yeah. on. Next question. Ford Fiesta ST or Fiat 124 Spider? And which road would you take your choice to? So, 
So first part of the question, I feel he is goading me. Now, I haven't done a video yet because I need to get around to doing it, but uh, Ben from Live to Drive and I, we put the Fiat uh, 124 Spider and the Fiesta ST head to head. Now, they're not really the sort of cars you would compare, but I did it on the basis of which is more fun. So I had the 124 Spider and he had the ST. Anyway, I'm starting to waffle already. So, as much as I really enjoyed the 124 Spider, deep down I am a hot hatch fan through and through. Therefore, it would have to be for the Fiesta ST. Where would I take it? Difficult one. I recently drove on the Evo Triangle, well, part of the Evo Triangle, and it blew me away. I absolutely loved it, so that would definitely be a contender. I would also like to do the Stelvio Pass, because I just love about it's hairpin after hairpin after hairpin. But if I had to choose one road, I would do Evo Triangle, because I have driven part of it, and I would like to drive more of it. Okay. Next. Nice and simple one from, I'm gonna probably say this wrong, Rangey27. Yeah, okay. Mercedes or BMW, simple to the point. Um, so, BMW. Purely because I, I've driven more BMW's cars. I prefer the way how they look. Uh, I'm a big fan of the M4. I like the M2 as well. And as much as I like Mercedes AMG, the rest of them, Mercedes just went past me. I don't know. I, I think there's something more exciting about BMW than Mercedes. But I haven't. I don't think I've driven any. I oh know I've driven the uh, AMG GT. But that was only on a high speed bowl, so you, got, you, know, you, you can't got, really pass judgment really on that. Not really, no. You go, oh, it's, well, it's fast, but you expect it to be fast. But for me, I'd say BMW because I just I prefer the way, the way how they look. Uh, I, I, I would say I prefer the interiors and I prefer the design. And I just think they're more exciting. Okay. Okay, next question is from Jake Belder. Yeah. What car did you learn to drive in? I quite like that question. That is a good question. Um, it was a Volkswagen Polo diesel. And I have to say, it was a good car. And I did like driving it. However, the brakes on it were quite sharp. They almost felt like a light switch. They were either on or off. Yes. But other I than that, agree with that. Um, yeah, you actually learned in that car as well, didn't you? Yes. Um, so yeah, that's what I learned to drive in. And yeah. Next question, and you'll understand in a minute why I absolutely love this question. Yeah. Because he supports me on my Thai par love. This is from Always Back You. Yeah. Love it. Why don't you sell the IB for FR and get a pre facelift Thai par EP3? Because this is on finance, so if I were to sell it, it would be more hassle than it's worth and just to give you a really quick history lesson because I don't want to go on too much on this question when I was, stop stop staring at me I can put you staring at me now when I looked at buying this car one of the cars I wanted to look at or to test to test drive I should say was for EP3 Type R now when I got the finance I had certain stipulations so the car couldn't be older than 10 years and it couldn't have more than 100,000 miles and I had a of course I had a budget so all the EP3s I looked at they didn't meet any of those so they were either the, the mileage was okay but but they were too old or they were young enough but the mileage mileage was too high or they were too expensive basically basically I couldn't get the right combination so that's why but I, you know what? I've never driven an EP3 Type R and I'd quite like to in the honesty I'd lo love to uh, experience that VTEC Ask always back at you, always back you, sorry, quite nicely. Always back at you? <laughs> Trying to get my names right. Right, that's it, you're sacked, get out. <laughs> right, what's the next question? Cheeky second question from supercar.spotter.uk. No, one question only, next, no, go on. No. He did actually say second question lol, so we'll let him off. Right, okay. Did it take you a while before you were comfortable on camera? That is a good question, and in all honesty, it varies. When I first set up the channel, I was doing a video once every month or so, was like give or take. Yeah, once every kind of four or um, five weeks. And at no point did I really feel awkward in front of the camera. The only time I felt awkward was when I was filming in public. 
public, therefore blogging when I went to motor shows and so forth. And I wouldn't say I've ever felt really uncomfortable, but sometimes my anxiety will play up. So there'll be some days where I, I just can't get my sentences out. And there's been a, time, a few times where I filmed car reviews and I've really struggled to kind of get across what I want to say in that review. And oh, ST. 200 SX Touring. Yeah, a bit of a uh, bit of JGM. So, difficult question. I'd say yes and no. I feel, I do feel confident in front of the camera, but I just feel some sometimes some days when my anxiety plays up, I just really struggle to say simple sentences and do simple things. Then I get my words in the wrong order, or I give out the wrong stats of a car. But um, yeah. I think the more you do something, the easier it becomes. Um, and I can certainly say I've seen like progression from filming your first video with you until mm. now. Yeah. And I know sometimes it can take three hours, four hours. I know sometimes it can mm. take longer. Next question. Okay. This is from Oliver Clark 55. Thank you, thank you. And I quite like this question. Mm. What's the most vintage car you have seen slash driven before? Well, it depends, because I think technically a vintage car would have to be built before the war, would it not? So, so there's a difference... Should we say classic vintage in, like a classic? Yeah, there's a difference between classic and vintage cars. So, if we're going to stick truly to the question, I've never driven a vintage car. Um, I've seen a few, but I can't think of any off the top of my head, maybe like a, a Bentley blower or that sort of thing at Goodwood. But if I'm going to change the question a little bit and change it to a classic, then the most classic car I've driven is the MG Midget that I drove last year. Yeah, and the, if you're going to change the question for the part before about you've ever seen. Well, I've seen loads of classic cars though. So True, very true. So to pick up just one is going to be but quite, uh, quite difficult. Okay, uh, next question is Steph underscore ABTV. Yep. If you could only drive two cars for the rest of your life and could never change them, what would they be? First one's easy, Ford Focus RS. Second one's a bit more difficult because I'm trying to think of cars of Oh god, it's so bumpy down here. I'm trying to think of cars that I've driven and I'm trying to think of something different because my other car I was thinking was the BMW M4, which I think is brilliant and it's the kind of car I think, why would you need to own a supercar if you've got an M4? But the Focus RS and the M4, although one's a coupe and one's a hatchback, they are you know, kind of aimed at the same thing. So it's a really difficult question to, to answer. I suppose if I'm going to have something like a Focus RS, maybe a classic. So maybe something like a Jaguar E Type or an Aston Martin DB5. Uh, I was. <laughs> I, I'm surprised you didn't say a DB5 straight away because as soon as I read that question, I thought to myself, he's going to say Ford Focus RS and an Aston Martin DB5. But you shocked me oh. to even think about it. Or maybe a classic Mini. If I had any say in it, I think I would prefer a DB5. I think you would regret not having a DB5. Yeah, but it would be quite nice to have a convertible. I could have a, um, I could have a Jaggy type convertible. I know you can get the DB5 in a Volante, but you know they're they're so rare. If you do find one in good nick, you've got to pay God knows how much for it. Okay. So yeah, definitely Ford Focus RS, second car, not, not too sure what Ron. Ah, you've got to answer the question. That's why people have asked. I think, I'd, I think I would like to have a classic, so... Uh, as much as I love DB5, I think I'm going to do a Jag E-Type.
where should I drop you off? I think I'd keep my own grandmother to get a Focus RS. Don't let your dad hear you say that. Or your mum. <laughs> Nans, if you're watching, I'm sorry. But if you knew how much I love the car, you'd understand. That's if they can catch me. <laughs> what, in your RS? Yeah, exactly. You still haven't answered the question. I'm actually starting to worry that you're considering this. I, t I told you. Where do you want me to drop you off? No, I can take you to a train station. It's the least I can do. I've got the house keys, so you're a bit stuck. I've got my own house keys. Hmm. I changed the locks. Have fun paying the rent on your own. I live in the RS. It'd be fine. You're living the RS? Yeah. So you're, you're safely going to say that you can sleep quite comfortably in the seats? It's got a big boot. Gonna have a sleeping bag in there. A little camp stove. What more does a man need? His wife. Right, is that all the questions, my that's dear? The question. Oh, that's it. No, you're still not having dinner. Don't try sucking up to me now. No. Ah. Oh, sorry, yes, that is all the questions. Oh, make your mind up. It is all the questions. I think next time we'll have a new quiz master. Right, so there we are, guys. Uh, for those that submitted the questions, thank you very much. It was uh, interesting to answer them. I really enjoyed this q and I'd like to do it more often. It's quite quite good to see what people ask. It's uh, genuinely intriguing. And some good questions, well, all good questions, in fact. So, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, give it a massive thumbs up. And if you haven't done already, please subscribe for more Car Obsession.